I was angry. I was annoyed. I remember being deeply hurt, totally offended. Here I was at a so-called motivational event that I'd paid to go to. I didn't think I'd get that. There were hundreds of people in that auditorium. The stage was bare, except for one man and his microphone. But it seemed like he was just looking at me. And his remark made my blood boil. You have right now exactly what you want in your life. How dare he? He didn't even know me and what was going on in my life. I was so upset. I blocked the rest of his talk out. I paid to be motivated. I was searching for something. I was unfulfilled, looking for answers. My marriage was falling apart. I was broke. I was sad, unhappy about what was happening in my life. And here he was telling me that it was my fault. Unbelievable, right? How would you feel? My fault, all my fault. I was disgusted. I left that seminar, life went on, my happy unhappiness just became part of life. And I got over being humiliated by that man, that man on the stage. So fast forward several years, and those words came back to haunt me again. Or did they? You have right now exactly what you want in your life. So what if I told you that those words that offended me actually transformed my life. You see, here I was, a crying mess on the bathroom floor. My marriage was over. My dreams had been shattered. My future seemed bleak. I was scared for me and the three precious little souls in the next room that needed their mama. I felt like a loser hopeless, a failure. And then I heard that voice again. You have right now exactly what you want in your life. Yeah, right, exactly. I have exactly what I want. I was distraught. I cried myself to sleep every night. Why had my life turned out like this? What have I done wrong? I don't deserve this. I was broken. What if I told you that I want to offend you? For the greater good, of course. And what if I told you that you have right now exactly what you want in your life? Now, don't switch me off. Stay with me. The choices that you have made, the decisions that you have made, that is what forms the reality that you have in your life right now. I was still angry, angry with the world. Life went on. And one day, a colleague invited me to a motivational seminar. I was starting a business and he thought that it would be good for me to go. And you know, I'd learn a lot. Great. Another damn seminar. But deep down, I guess I was searching for that something, that thing that would make me happy, make me love my life again. So I went along. Guess what? Same damn thing. This guy was using different words, but basically said the same thing that I needed to be 100% responsible for the results in my life. Great, my fault again. But this time I did listen as he explained what that meant. He talked about mindset and belief systems. And I started to really pay attention. I'd never thought about this before. And he told me that I could actually change some things that I believed. He told me that what I believed probably wasn't even right. It was just what I believed, just what I believed to be true. 
he actually really started to get my interest. You see, I believed that women were weak and that they were only put on earth to be below men, that a woman must submit to a man and put up with whatever comes your way and don't challenge it. I believed that I was a loser, hopeless. I was a bad person, bad mum and a whole lot of other things. And I started to wonder if I could really change my beliefs and change my mindset. What if I could believe that I was a strong person? What if I could believe that I was a good person and not a loser? What if I could believe that I could be happy? What if I could believe I could be proud of myself? He then talked about limiting beliefs and how he could help me work on these. How instead of thinking, you can't make it on your own, you're not good enough, you don't have what it takes to be successful in business, your business will fail because you're just hopeless. No one likes you. You're fat, ugly, stupid. This was what I thought about myself. My kids went to a lovely little Christian school. And when I went to anything in that school, I'd always sit up the back. I never felt as good as the other parents. I was divorced, hopeless, loser. I carried so much guilt about my poor kids having such a loser for a mother. I was broke. I was often late paying the school fees. I thought that everybody was talking about me. The single mother, the one that has no money, the one that's a loser. So I sat up the back. I avoided my past friends. I was sad, scared, weak, embarrassed, and I felt so guilty that I believed that I had let my precious kids down. I was just not good enough. Has anyone else ever felt like that? That voice came back. You have right now exactly what you want in your life. Only this time it made more sense. Was I taking 100% responsibility for the results that I was getting in my life? For the first time ever, I saw some light. The aha moment. Maybe, maybe. What if, just what if, what if I could do something? What if my life didn't have to be like this? What if some of the things I thought were not really right? What if I could work on my thoughts, my beliefs, my mindset? The penny finally dropped. Thank you, thank you, thank you. The voice finally made sense. So how did I transform that? I made a decision. I decided that I would be responsible. I would accept that I had exactly what I wanted in my life. And I would do whatever I had to do to design my perfect life. This time, I wasn't offended. This time, a light bulb came on. This time, I was ready to receive another way. I felt enlightened. I knew that shift was coming. I started to believe that I could be in control, that maybe, just maybe, I could have more confidence, more self-worth. Maybe I can do it. Maybe I am enough. So I started on my personal development journey. I started working on myself. If I didn't love myself and be accountable and responsible for me, how could I possibly ever really love anyone again? How could I be the best mum for my kids? How could I be the Robin that I was meant to be? I started to dream. I learned that passion and courage are the fuel to getting to where I wanted to be in life. I became curious about how I could change the beliefs that I had and change my mindset. I could change what I focused on. 
so that I focused on what I wanted and not what I didn't want. I studied neuro-linguistic programming, timeline therapy, hypnosis and coaching. I was becoming a different person. I started to be in control. I started to believe in myself and have more confidence. I believed that I have a purpose in this world. I started to be able to look people in the eye and be proud of who I was. I didn't need to sit up the back anymore. So did all of this happen overnight? No way. It was like six steps forward and five steps back. But gradually, over time, I accepted myself and I used my mistakes and failures as stepping stones to learn from. One of the biggest blessings was that I found a new circle of people, like-minded people who supported me and helped me to become the best version of me that I can be. People who called me out when I wasn't being 100% responsible and accountable in my life. People who coached me to stretch me, stretch my beliefs and my dreams. People who encouraged me, encouraged my vision for my life and my business. I had a coach who called me and kicked my butt because she said I wasn't playing big enough. She saw something in me that I couldn't see in myself. At times, I struggled with self-confidence and that belief that I wasn't good enough. She saw that I could be stretched further out of my comfort zone and would chastise me when I crawled back into my comfort zone. I remember this day when she told me how selfish I was being by not reaching out to people to help other people. Whilst I was just thinking, why would anybody want to listen to me anyway? She told me one day that we would travel the world together, speaking to other women, helping them to design their lives the way that they wanted. And I politely said, that would be nice. But those limiting beliefs came up. You aren't good enough. You're a loser. But she never gave up on me, not her or the many other people that surrounded me. When I got out of my own way, that's when I started to be able to empower other people. Never underestimate the importance of who your circle is. Never be too proud to have a coach. Someone who empowers you to grow and help you to be the very best version that you can be and to cheer you on when you thrive and is there to pick you up when you fail and make sure that you get back on the right track. So hang out with like-minded people. That changed my life. And I can look in the mirror now. And I am grateful, so grateful for my life. If we don't have challenges, we don't grow. We don't know what happiness is until we experience unhappiness. We don't know what pleasure is until we experience pain. We're all unique, one of a kind. Nobody else can fill the particular place in the world in which we live. You were born full of potential. You have more than you think. You have the possibility to be all you were meant to be, to have everything you want in life, to design your life just for you. Or you can grumble gripe and complain that you never had a chance. Complain about all that life dealt you. 
except that this is just your lot in life. Maybe even feel sorry for yourself. I'd love to leave you with some words from the great Jim Rohn. And he said, if you don't like where you are, move. You're not a tree. Change your mindset and change your life. Are you really taking responsibility for your life?